Hello, this is Craig, and in my day I've created a lot of dungeons, both for tabletop dungeon delves and for automatic uh, use in, you know, roguelikes on a computer. Um, generating dungeons is always interesting, but I find that automatic dungeon generation has a problem where it doesn't make any sense. Uh, there's no sense of sense, and there's no sense of progression. The players who move through it don't get that rewarding feel that they're actually moving through something that exists. Instead, they kind of have this tenuous string of conflicts and meaningless choices. Um, and I think that uh, that is something we can fix. So that's what I created this method for. So this method focuses on using multiple uh, phases, and basically each phase zooms in a little bit further. And as a start, we will go ahead and create a, a classic dungeon where we've got just a couple of races randomly thrown together. So here's some goblins. And we'll just say that they're in this region. And we'll say there's some skeletons over here in this region. And we'll say there's a dragon down here somewhere. And then there's some some slimes here. And we'll say the main entrance is here, because the goblins are the ones that go in and out, so they'll be closest to the main entrance. And this just forms our basic, uh, this is the kind of challenges we want our players to face, and in the kind of quantity we want them to, to face it. Now, this doesn't mean there won't be any slimes in the goblin layer. Or may, you know, there might be dragon chicks hanging out in the skeleton zone. But in terms of topology, this is kind of what we're going for. And I'm using a dungeon as an example, but this is actually just as useful for other kinds of things like cities. Um, so once we've done this, the next step is to use these three kinds of rooms. Now we're way, way zoomed out, but uh, so so keep in mind that these are uh, huge, uh, huge rooms. The first is the atrium. An atrium is a very large, multi-story room. Uh, so in this case, we'll say that the goblins have an atrium, and we'll say that it's three stories high. So this is a big open room with two more stories above it. Um, all of the stories look out over the main shared area, so these are walkways and maybe there's catwalks running across. These give your dungeon, or any kind of system, a strong sense of verticality. Um, and we'll give the dragon one too, because he's tall. And we'll actually make his atrium just fly off uh, into open sky so that dra the dragon can get in and out by flying. So these are atriums. Uh, but these guys here are kind of small, and creating an atrium for them would be overkill. So what we'll do instead is we'll just create a loop. This is the third one here, the loop. Uh, loops are a method of... Uh, uh, they're similar to atriums, but they're only one story tall. Now, because we're so far zoomed out, this one story tall might actually be two stories tall, but in essence, they're much shorter. There's no verticality in a loop. Um, but there is a lot of shared space still. So this is the basic setup we've got, and now we have to connect them up using vestibules. So first we've got the main entryway to the goblin base. So we'll just go ahead and set that up here. And this would be the area where there would be goblin sentries and traps and so on and so forth. If the character's coming through here, they've got a really, you know, you don't want to alert the entire goblin base that you've arrived. So you've got to be careful. We'll put another atrium here. And another atrium here. Now these don't actually connect up correctly, and we want another atrium here. So the question is, do we want the atrium for the dragon to connect to the skeleton or to the slimes or to both? Well, that's a call that you can make on your own, but for now I'm going to go ahead and point it at the skeletons. But these don't actually connect. There's a lot of empty space here. Um, we could connect with a corridor, and in this case I think we will. But I don't think we want a corridor to stretch quite this far. That's a lot of open, flat space. So instead we're going to use loops. And these are the same exact kind of loops. So this loop is actually, we're going to go ahead and make it off of the third floor rather than off of the ground floor just because we want some of that verticality. So uh, uh, here we could go ahead and create another loop, so that's what we'll do. So what we've got here is a node map. 
and it doesn't it's not a typical node map but fun fundamentally it's still a node map we've got x connected to y connected to z um, in various ways so the next step is to simply zoom in on this map and start to fill it in in terms of what rooms go where uh, and what we want to do but here's the thing when we zoom in uh, we're not simply we're not simply populating these areas with rooms we're actually populating the areas with more zones so in this case uh, if we're going to zoom in on the goblin atrium atriums have a large central shared area um, the whole point of an atrium is to allow people who enter that area to reach a huge number of different locations and I mean they've got like staircases and stuff in them uh, whereas the loop is more intended to give people uh, access to everything as a circuit. But that means that the center of the atrium is usually where there is some kind of fundamental gathering spot. Uh, so for the goblins, we can go ahead and make this a goblin hive, which has like uh, walkways leading out to the upper floors. Um, the dragon, the dragon himself, will be the center of attention there. And uh, down here in the loops, loops are the same. The central area of the loop is reserved for a shared resource, whereas the outside of the loop is reserved for individual resources. So over here we've got the skeletons, and their shared resource is probably a graveyard. And then off to the side would be the various tombs and so on and so forth. But again, we're talking about zones, not actual rooms. So we would say that this zone here is a tombstone zone. Uh, for the slime pit, we'll say that this area here is a shared slime pit where uh, all of the corpses are dumped. All the corpses that the goblins don't want to eat are dumped, so the goblins come down here and just dispose of it in their giant trash disposal. Uh, we need some shared spaces here. Uh, since these are slightly more private than the hive, these might be like, say, the king's mansion. Um, we might have uh, a, a, a lich or something here, some kind of, of undead spellcaster. Uh, and over here we might have, uh, you know, goblin workshops. Or uh, the hoard where they keep all our treasure or whatever. But again, these are all zones. So what we actually want to do is start to fill in these zones. And the way we do that is we use the exact same procedure, but with smaller units. So for here, you know, this, this uh, uh, goblin stronghold would have a couple of zones in it where we would create interior atriums to the goblin stronghold and some loops and, you know, connect them um, with vestibules. And on the outside, we might have some uh, smaller atriums that are connected by vestibules and with loops on them. Um, so the core idea here is that all of these are fundamentally, I wouldn't call them fractal because that's so misused, uh, but they're fundamentally the same category of, uh, of map as you zoom in. Uh, and you can theoretically continue to do this right down to the individual rooms where you'd have like a bedroom and the loop would be uh, uh, the circuit around the bed because the bed would be the shared resource and on the outside you would have uh, you know, the, dr the dressing, the dresser and uh, the chest and the mirror and the closet. So you can zoom in infinitely but the core idea is that you're creating this node map where you've got all of these nodes that lead off to small smaller areas which have node maps of their own. Um, now the real issue you have to be careful of is you don't want this to become so simple. Uh, you know, it's not like you, you, the players should not be able to go, oh, I start here and then I go here and I fight this guy and I go here and I fight this guy, I go here and I fight. That's not what this is. Instead, what you're trying to do is create a situation where the players feel that they want to, that they're going to go off into a more complex area, but they're not going to feel lost. They're going to know that they can always come back to the central zone. So you would have a loop here and the players wouldn't be like, oh, I fight this. They'd be like, okay, well, we go into the loop. And there's some stuff in here. And maybe there's a smaller challenge. Maybe we can finish the whole loop off in one big combat. Maybe there's a couple of smaller things in here, like a locked door or something. Similarly, you don't have to keep everything independent. Um, now, this is a trick that I generally leave until after I've created everything. But sometimes I do it ahead of time. Basically, if you were to consider these to be zones, where there's stuff in the zones, you generally would want to keep them separate, so you can't move from one loop to another. 
uh, but there can be a lot of value in creating those kinds of connections. You just have to be careful that the players won't get lost. To that end, I usually only connect something if I've closed something else off. For example, let's say that I've got it set up so that when the players actually go into the goblin workshop, they'll eventually destroy it before they can get through to the undead area. And then what I'll do is I'll just have a, a secret path that runs like this. So they have to go back through here and find the secret path. And you would you would denote that with some kind of, you know, they'd find a goblin writing on writing on something, or the workshop would say, oh, you know, deliver this to the secret path in the slime base, or whatever. Um, there'd be some method of, of telling the players that that secret path exists. And alternately, you could do this without destroying the, the foundry, um, and then just leave it up to the players as to a, do they actually find out about the secret path, and B, do they choose to try and sneak in through the secret path, or do they go in through the foundry? So once you've created the core map, the adding, adding in more routes is just a matter of deciding which areas you want to connect and which areas you want to disconnect. And in that manner, you can create topological challenges and topological constraints that are outside of this very basic tree, since that's, a, that's what this really is, it's a tree. So this is the way that I've built the dungeon, with the idea being that eventually you do go down into individual rooms. Um, but the players explore, and they never feel lost. They always feel like they're making progress. They always feel like every element of it makes sense. And they always feel like they're somewhere. Um, and each of these little zones has its own little specialty. You know, here's where all the goblin women tend to hang out, and over here you have some mages studying, and and over here you've got the warrior barracks and whatever. So all of these zones are are a lot of, they feel very contextual. And I think that's important, and it's something that's overlooked. Um, and the, pro the sense of progress as you clear these areas uh, is palpable. Of course, it really depends. If, if the players want to blitz through it, then you'll generally want to focus more on closing these areas off rather than leaving them open. But either way, we're talking about creating a dungeon for the players to explore. Now I said before that this can also be used for cities, so let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Uh, you always need to have an entry point for every uh, map, but it doesn't always have to be the point of entry that you might think. So in this case we're going to have the entry point be a bridge. And obviously the players would be coming in from out of town normally, um, so this entry point here is just for the sake of the town. So here's two vestibules off of the bridge. And in this case, the vestibules might be malls or parking lots or turnabouts, places where you can go. Um, you know, you get on your car, you go across the bridge, and now you've reached an area where your car, you have several different destinations to choose from, or maybe you stop and get off and walk. So just like just like before, you lay down the various regions. So here you might have, uh, you know, commercial district, and here you might have industrial district. Uh, here you might have uh, expensive district where people live. Uh, here you might have the uh, low low rent district. And each of these has the same basic rules as before, where some of these are going to be vestibule, uh, some of them are going to be atriums, and some of them are going to be loops, um, as you see fit. In this case, the atriums, the verticality of the atrium would be accomplished via skyscrapers rather than by a large room with multiple floors. So these zones would have skyscrapers in them, or very large factories, whatever. Whereas these smaller areas, or loops rather, not necessarily smaller areas, but uh, less vertical areas, they would have shorter buildings making up the primary uh, uh, bulk of their shared space. And of course you follow the same rules and branch out and so on and so forth, but instead of thinking of individu individual rooms, you're thinking of roads and uh, buildings. You still get the same basic result where you've got the uh, um, where you've got the same kind of zooming down and having different kinds of uh, uh, internal loops and vestibules and atriums of different sizes that the players can explore. In the case of a city, they're probably not going to be exploring but you can still have the basic district form format laid out, um, and you can even lay out the major roads and have car chases and so on and so forth. And the city feels like it makes sense. 
And uh, that's really all I wanted to say, I guess. This is, uh, uh, at the very least, I hope it's been food for thought. Um, but in essence, this is a way to uh, lay out areas and then zoom in and lay out areas and then zoom in and lay out areas. And you can automate it. You can make a computer program that just does it automatically. And it'll still make sense. Although, obviously, having humans do it will always be a little bit more interesting. <laughs>